In this video, I'm going to talk about the effects of forces, and then I'm going to teach you how to calculate resultant force. So forces, we've said, cannot be seen, but we can identify a force by what it does. They can change shape of objects and change the way they move. So the four things you need to know that are the effects of forces. Forces can change the speed that an object is moving with. So it can go from stationary to moving or moving to moving faster. So there in this little animated GIF, you see the object starts stationary and then starts to move. So it increases its speed from zero meters per second to more than that. The next one is it can change the object's direction of motion. Okay, you can see this martial artist changing the direction of motion of those that come to attack him. And you can think of anything, a squash ball as it hits the wall, changes direction of motion. A tennis ball as it hits your racket, uh, a basketball as it rebounds off the back of the hoop, all of those different things. The next one, it can change an object's shape. So as you see this ball bouncing off the walls, you can see it changes from a circular shape to a slightly squashed circle to oval. It changes an object's shape. If you crumple up a piece of paper, it will change its shape. If you tear a piece of paper, it changes its shape. And the last one, we can change an object's size using force. And here you see a rubbish truck colliding with a smaller truck and changing it from a large truck to a tiny little piece of metal. Obviously, it's changing in this GIF. It is changing size, shape, direction of motion, and speed. All four things are being changed. But there are the effects of forces. You need to learn these for speed, direction of motion, shape, and size. Next, we're going to talk about resultant forces. A resultant force is the overall force acting on an object. At any given time, there are many forces acting on objects, as you can see from this diagram of a car here. There's the weight force, there's the normal force acting the earth, pushing back up on the car. There's friction if the car is moving, the little red arrows. There is the thrust force or the driving force, the applied force of the engine in the yellow there and the purple is air resistance pushing back on the car. So there are many forces acting. Overall, what is the overall force um, acting on this car? We would have to add forces together or subtract them depending on if they're in the same or different directions to find out the resultant force. So forces which act along a straight line, in other words, in the same direction. Here you can see that the blue and green forces, the Normal force and the weight are in the same direction, so we can add or subtract them. And the red, yellow, and purple forces are also in the same direction. So they can be added if they're in the same direction or subtracted in the opposite direction. The force that you get after adding or subtracting these forces is called the resultant force. The resultant force is a single force that has the same effect as all the other forces combined. So if this car was driving along the road, the resultant force would be the yellow part of the yellow force in the direction to the right. So at the bottom here, we see resultant force. If the resultant force is zero, then the forces are balanced. No movement takes place. This occurs in this diagram with the weight and reaction force. This car is not moving up or down, and so those forces would be balanced. If the resultant force is not zero, the forces are unbalanced and movement takes place. If we added up the two friction forces and the air resistance, we would find that they are less than the thrust force or the applied force, the yellow force um, on this car, and the car would be moving in to the right. So let's do some practice calculating resultant force. We've got some diagrams showing forces acting on a cardboard box. We draw the force using an arrow showing the direction of the force and we write the magnitude, the size of the force next to the arrow, as you can see in this diagram. So there's two forces acting on this box, one to the left of, two new of 10 newtons and one to the right of 10 newtons. 
So to calculate resultant force, in the first force diagram, the forces are in the opposite are in opposite directions, so they must be subtracted. Resultant force is 10 newtons minus 10 newtons, so overall the resultant force is 0 newtons. This is an example of a balanced force because resultant force is 0. So the object, the cardboard box, would not be moving. There is no overall force on the cardboard box. In our next example, again, there are two forces of 10 newtons, but this time both forces are acting to the right. So in the second force diagram, forces are in the same direction and therefore they can be added. Resultant force is 10 newtons plus 10 newtons, which gives us an overall resultant force of 20 newtons. And that force we must give a direction to 20 newtons to the right. So this is an example of an unbalanced force because the resultant force is not zero. And because there is a force acting on this box, it will move and it will move to the right. And the last example we have, again, we have two, two forces acting in opposite directions. One is 10 newtons and one is 8 newtons. So in the third force diagram, the forces are in opposite directions and therefore must be subtracted. 10 newtons minus 8 newtons equals 2 newtons. Just a note here, if you're subtracting forces because they're in opposite directions, always put the bigger force first. Subtract the smaller force from the bigger force so that you get a positive result and that will be 2 newtons to the left. This is another example of an unbalanced force because the resultant force is not zero. So once you've written the notes, the last slide is going to give you a chance to practice calculating resultant force. I'd like you to lay it out in the same way that I have in the examples previously, which you will have written in your book. So draw the diagram. You may just draw a dot in the center, a free body force diagram. You do not need to draw the people involved in the tug of war. Good luck.